my whole thing about it is, is that it was always a between those two, physically. But Kim got tired of it and she wasn't taking him. If he put his hands on her, she was going at him. Guys, this story about how Kim Porter really died just took a whole new messy turn, and now her friends and family want the case reopened. So what has Kimora Lee said about the situation, and what exactly do the friends and family want? P.S. The key word is, you probably guessed it, Diddy Love. Okay, when Kim Porter passed, Kimora Lee was one of the people who arrived at her house, and based on photos and videos taken from that day, she was completely devastated. She also gave the most heartfelt tribute on Instagram, writing in part, this is unbelievable. When I first heard the news, I was angry that someone would play such a stupid joke. They said you were in your room sleeping. Aoki and I rushed to your house to tell you to get up and come your ass outside. But as soon as I arrived, I realized you would not come. But here's the thing. Recently, there have been a lot of developments about what really happened to Kim Porter. Because according to some of her celebrity friends, that story about how she got pneumonia and died a few days later is some BS. Well, the first thing that is raising eyebrows is the fact that the deputy coroner, Ed Winter, who handled the case, died literally just a few weeks ago. He's the same coroner who found a suspicious toxin when he was trying to figure out what happened to Kim Porter. At the time, Ed Winter said that the situation needed to be investigated further, but he was replaced by another coroner, and it took a long time for the second coroner to conclude that Kim had passed because of pneumonia. Anyway, other than that, it has come to light, based on what Kim's friends and family members have been spilling, that in the days leading up to her death, Kim was trying to get in touch with her primary doctor because she felt like something was wrong. Unfortunately, she couldn't get in touch with her doctor. She apparently found it strange that the doctor didn't get back to her because she had never had a problem reaching the doctor before. Then Kim reportedly told Diddy that she couldn't reach her doctor and he referred her to a different doctor. Interesting. And here's something else that was strange around that time, according to the friends. Diddy said that Kim sent the twins to him because she didn't want them to catch the flu she had. He said, Three days before she passed, she wasn't feeling well. She had the flu, and she sent the kids over to my house so they wouldn't get sick. One night, I was checking on her, and she was like, Puffy, take care of my babies. She actually said that to me before she died. But according to reliable sources, the twins told two of Kim's girlfriends that they were already scheduled to go to their father, and it was just a coincidence that their mom fell sick at the time. So Diddy lied about Kim sending the kids to him without planning. Again, very interesting. It gets even juicier, because apparently two of Kim's celebrity friends reached out to the primary doctor, and the doctor supposedly said that he never got a call from Kim, and he didn't even know that Kim was sick. Honestly, the only thing I know that makes sense is that somebody got to Kim's doctor before she did, and her communication to the doctor was blocked in advance. Do you wanna know something that's even crazier? According to the friends who are unidentified, and one could possibly be Kimora, the night before Kim died, she texted a couple of her friends and told them, he got me. She also suggested in the text that she had been poisoned, which wouldn't be a first in Hollywood, right? They have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Also, when Diddy showed up with the security at Kim Porter's house, the security team confiscated her phone. Allegedly, one of the friends even questioned Diddy about why he was so preoccupied with her phone when Kim had literally just passed away. The friends also said that there were questions among them about the manner in which Kim died, cause things just didn't add up. According to them, if whoever gave the report insists that it was pneumonia and that Kim died peacefully in her sleep, then they should explain why there was blood found on Kim's pillowcases and also a slight trail of blood on the bedroom floor that led to the bathroom. Allegedly, Kim was not found unresponsive in her bed. She was discovered on the bathroom floor, and if they found her in bed, then she was strategically placed there. Now, I don't know if the friend who was giving out that information was Kimora, but since she was one of Kim's closest friends, I can bet that she also had questions. And considering Diddy's history with women, reopening the case and filing a wrongful death suit isn't far-fetched at all. This is the same man that got another woman pregnant when Kim was pregnant. And as if cheating on Kim with a side piece wasn't enough, he also verbally, emotionally, and physically messed her up. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, actually confirmed the allegations when he said that Diddy had not only broken Kim's nose, which was subsequently disguised as plastic surgery, but she also once slit his wrist during a fight to get away. Remember, one of Diddy's other exes, Gina, also exposed how badly she was treated when they were in a relationship. He was like mentally, emotionally, and physically a 
molesting me. Gina even went into detail about how at one point, Diddy took off one of her heels and tried to throw it at her. Then Diddy mushed her face so hard that her nose bled. Also, other than being mentally, physically, and emotionally harmed, she also had to get rid of more than one pregnancy. Well, I told him and he was like, he was like, you're gonna get a right? And then I was like, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know yet. And then, and then he offered me 50,000 to get rid of it, but I turned it down because um, I just, I just loved him. So it's not crazy for Kim's friends like Kimora to insist that the case be reopened for further investigation. There's actually a source that spilled that Kim's family and friends are already seeking legal advice and are in pursuit of slapping Diddy with a lawsuit for wrongful death. The source claimed that the family is said to have physical evidence to support their case and that they have been undeniably shattered by Kim's death because they feel she didn't die from natural causes. Apparently, all these emerging details about Kim are also supposed to be revealed in a book that her family and friends have been trying to release, but Diddy won't let them release the book. One of the people who has been contributing to the book has even said, just wanted to let you know that Sean has put the clamps on Kim Porter's book from making it to the shelves. Yep, he done put the pressure on all the parties involved in the process of putting the book together. And I get why Diddy would not want that book to hit the shelves, because it apparently goes into details of how Kim would do crazy stuff for him, how she kept Albie Shore from running into Diddy and telling him not to go to certain places, and how the East and West Coast faked things to eliminate Tupac and Biggie to obtain their masters because Pac and Biggie were allegedly planning to get together to challenge Bad Boy and Death Row for the rights to their music. The book also apparently goes into the specifics of how Kim was mistreated, from how her house was being wired to how phone lines were tapped and how Diddy paid personnel to watch her closely, and even details of how Diddy wanted full custody of their twins, but Kim threatened to expose him if he ever took their kids from her. And let's not even begin with the evidence that Diddy is on the down low and other illegal dealings of his. You know a lot of the friends are probably being careful because somehow something always happens to the people who try to expose Diddy. And Jaguar Wright said it best. And Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's it? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. It's even stranger that Andre was writing a book before he died, Heavy D was writing a book before he died, Kim was writing a book before she died, and Albie Shore was working on a documentary about his life before he went into a coma. So maybe Kimora Lee is scared of saying something that would also make her disappear or land in a coma or something. Honestly, all we can do is hope the truth comes out because there's definitely something there. But let me know what you think about these new developments regarding Kim Porter's death in the comments section below. Do you think the case should be reopened? And if you liked watching the video, check out this next one.